welcome to your personal deep dive. Wow, you weren't kidding about wanting the full picture on quantum computing. Look at this stack of articles, research papers. You even have handwritten notes here. It's impressive. You're really engaging with this from all angles. It's not just about quantum for beginners. You've got the optimistic takes, the technical deep dives, even some stuff on the ethics of it all. Okay, let's unpack this. You've sent us everything from optimistic takes on quantum's future to deep dives on technical hurdles and even ethical concerns. Clearly, you want the full picture, and that's what we're here for. What's fascinating here is the range you're engaging with. You're not just skimming the surface, you're grappling with the optimistic predictions, the technical roadblocks, the whole quantum shebang. It feels like quantum computing is always five to 10 years away. Yeah. But is that hype or is something really big brewing? It's less about a single aha moment and more like assembling a puzzle, one piece of insight at a time. And you've got some intriguing pieces here. Okay, so puzzle pieces it is. And one of the most striking pieces you've uncovered is this divergence between public and private investment. Venture capital funding in quantum startups seems to have hit the brakes, dropping a significant 50% from 2022. Yet government funding is through the roof. You've stumbled upon a crucial insight. Governments aren't just investing, they're doubling down while the VC world is getting skittish. This suggests a strategic calculation, almost a quantum arms race brewing beneath the surface. That's a whole different ballgame than just some hot new tech trend. More than 30 governments pouring billions into quantum research, they must see something the private sector doesn't write. It's not about short-term profits, it's about long-term power. Governments are looking at quantum through the lens of national security, economic dominance, even the future of warfare. That adds a layer of complexity we can't ignore. And that complexity extends to the tech itself. You even included an article boldly proclaiming that factoring large numbers, the cornerstone of online security, will be toast once quantum computers hit the scene, should we be hitting the panic button. It's tempting to get swept up in the doomsday scenarios. But let's unpack those fears. While quantum computers could theoretically crack current encryption methods, it's not as imminent as some headlines suggest. Several of the articles you flagged highlight the very real hurdles facing quantum computers. Quibit stability, entanglement, and scalability. These aren't just buzzwords. They're the Everest expeditions of quantum computing. You're spot on. Take quibit stability, for example. These quantum bits, the building blocks of this technology, are notoriously fickle. They're incredibly susceptible to environmental noise. Even the slightest interference can throw them off. So imagine trying to balance a spinning top on a roller coaster. That's essentially what we're dealing with. It's a vivid image. And while researchers have made strides in improving quibit stability, one of your articles mentioned a remarkable 99.9% .9 fidelity achieved in recent experiments. We're talking about the need for millions, if not billions, of operations for complex algorithms. Even a tiny error rate compounded over those operations makes the results unreliable. Okay, so no need to shred our hard drives just yet. But what about entanglement? It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. It's certainly mind-bending. Entanglement is the ability to link quibits so they behave as a single unit, even when physically separated. This interconnectedness is what gives quantum computers their computational edge. But reliably entangling large numbers of quibits and maintaining that entanglement throughout a computation, that's the real challenge. So we've got these incredibly sensitive quibits that need to be linked together in this delicate quantum dance, mm. and then there's scalability. You've hit upon the holy grail of quantum computing. Currently, even the most advanced systems are relatively small. To unlock the true potential of those world changer applications you've been reading about, we need to build systems with millions, even billions of quibits all working in perfect harmony. It's like trying to build a skyscraper out of playing cards incredibly complex and requiring entirely new approaches to engineering and architecture. And that's precisely what makes this feel so captivating. It's not just about incremental improvements. It's about fundamental breakthroughs in our understanding of the quantum world and our ability to harness its power. So we're talking about a field that's really pushing the boundaries of science and engineering. And you've been digging into those boundaries. One of the articles you shared mentioned IQM Quantum Computers, a company developing modular quantum computers. That sounds intriguing. Is it like building a quantum computer with Lego blocks? It's a clever analogy. Modularity is a fascinating approach to tackling that scalability challenge. 
companies like IQM are designing systems that can be interconnected, you know, yep. expanded over time, potentially offering a more flexible and cost-effective path to larger-scale quantum computing. So instead of having to build one giant hyper-complex system, we can connect smaller quantum modules, like puzzle pieces. That's brilliant. And speaking of puzzle pieces, another article in your stack really caught my eye, the one about quantum computing and AI. It seems like these two fields are, like, destined to collide. It's not just a collision, it's more of a fusion. The synergy between quantum computing and AI is one of the most exciting aspects of this whole field. On the one hand, quantum computers could supercharge AI algorithms, you see, enabling them to process information and learn at, well, unprecedented speeds. So we're talking about AI systems that are not just faster, but fundamentally smarter, capable of tackling challenges that are currently beyond even the most advanced supercomputers. Imagine AI that can accurately predict and mitigate financial crashes, design personalized medical treatments, but with incredible precision, or even develop entirely new forms of renewable energy. The possibilities are, well, mind-boggling. It's like we're giving AI a turbocharged brain boost. But it's not just a one-way street, is it? The article also mentioned how AI could be used to, you know, improve quantum computing itself. Absolutely. One area where AI is proving invaluable is in error correction. Remember those fragile quibits? AI algorithms can be trained to detect and correct errors in real time, which significantly improves the reliability of quantum computations. It's like having a dedicated team of AI debuggers working tirelessly you know, behind the scenes to keep those quantum calculations on track. That's a game changer. And speaking of game changers, you included a thought-provoking piece on hybrid quantum classical systems. What exactly are they, and why are they causing such a stir? Hybrid systems represent a pragmatic approach to bridging the gap between the kind of promise of quantum computing and the realities of today's technology. As we've discussed, building large-scale, fault-tolerant quantum computers is a monumental task. It's not going to happen overnight. So hybrid systems offer a way to dip our toes into the quantum pool without having to dive, like, headfirst into the deep end. Precisely. These systems combine the strengths of classical computers with the unique capabilities of quantum processors. We can think of it as a tag team approach to problem solving, you know. The classical computer handles the bulk of the computation, while the quantum processor is strategically deployed for specific tasks that benefit from its unique computational advantages. It's like having a specialized tool in your toolkit. You wouldn't use a sledgehammer to hang a picture, mm -hmm. but it sure comes in handy for demolition work. Exactly. Hybrid systems allow us to start tackling real-world problems today, even with relatively small and kind of noisy quantum processors. It's about making the most of what we have while we continue to push the boundaries of quantum technology. That makes a lot of sense. It's a practical and strategic approach to this rapidly evolving field. But amidst all this technological excitement, we can't forget the bigger picture, right? You included several articles that delve into the ethical considerations of quantum computing, a topic that's often overshadowed by the hype. You're absolutely right to highlight this. It's not enough to simply develop this technology. We must also consider its potential impact on society, both positive, AD, negative. One article even went so far as to call it a potential Pandora's box, which honestly sent chills down my spine. It's a stark reminder that with great power comes great responsibility. And quantum computing, with its potential to break encryption, disrupt industries, and even reshape geopolitical power, it's a technology that demands our utmost attention and ethical consideration. So we need to be having these conversations now, while the technology is still in its you know, relatively early stages, to ensure that we're steering it in a direction that benefits all of humanity. Precisely. We need to be proactive, not reactive. And that requires a multidisciplinary approach, bringing together not just scientists and engineers, but also ethicists, policymakers, and the public at large. Because it's not just about building a quantum computer, it's about building a quantum future that we can all be proud of. Well said. And that future will undoubtedly have a profound impact on the workforce. Many of the articles you shared touch upon this, expressing both excitement and concern about the potential for job displacement. It's the classic fear of technology making human workers kind of obsolete. Are we all destined to be replaced by quantum-powered robots? It's a valid concern, but it's crucial to remember that technological advancements throughout history have always been met with both hope and fear. It's like the Industrial Revolution all over again. New technologies emerge, old jobs disappear, and new opportunities arise. Precisely. 
While it's difficult to predict the exact nature of the jobs that will be created or displaced by quantum computing, it's clear that education and workforce development will be crucial for navigating this transition. So instead of fearing the unknown, we should be preparing for it, equipping ourselves and future generations with the skills and knowledge to thrive in a quantum-powered world. Absolutely. And those skills go beyond just, you know, technical expertise in quantum computing. We need to foster adaptability, critical thinking, creativity, and a lifelong love of learning. These are the qualities that will enable individuals and societies to adapt and thrive in the face of rapid technological change. It seems like through all this research you've done, you're really wrestling with this question. Mm -hmm. Is quantum computing really the next big thing, or are we all like caught up in a hype cycle? It's the question everyone's asking. And, yeah. and your deep dive here, it really reflects that tension. We see the potential, the, the mind-blowing possibilities. But at the same time, we're also wrestling with the very real limitations of where the technology is you know, today. So where do we go from here? What's the next chapter in this whole you know, quantum saga? Anything in this stack of yours, give us clues. One recurring theme that I uh, found interesting is the emphasis on collaboration. It's not just about, you know, some isolated labs racing to build a better quantum computer. It's about creating a global ecosystem, really, of researchers, entrepreneurs, policymakers, all working together. So less of a, like, sprint to the finish line, more of a global brainstorming session to figure out how to even run this race. Exactly. We're seeing these unprecedented levels of investment, but it's not just about throwing money at the problem. It's about breaking down the silos between the disciplines, fostering open communication, you know, embracing a diversity of perspectives. Because the truly groundbreaking solutions, mm -hmm. they rarely come from just working in isolation. Right. It's about bringing together these great minds from all different fields. Quantum physicists collaborating with biologists, computer scientists teaming up with material scientists, everyone learning from each other. And that's where your deep dive becomes so valuable. It's not just about like accumulating knowledge. It's about connecting the dots, seeing the bigger picture. And that that broader perspective is crucial for navigating this complex landscape. So it's not just about understanding the science, but actually like engaging with it, helping to shape its trajectory. Precisely. This isn't just a spectator sport. Whether you're, you know, a seasoned researcher, a curious investor, or just someone trying to make sense of all this quantum buzz, your voice matters in this conversation. Because the future of quantum computing, it isn't a done deal, right? It's being written, like, right now. Yeah. And the more informed and engaged we are, the better equipped we'll be to steer this technology in a direction that well, benefits all of us. And that brings us back to something we were talking about earlier, the uh, importance of balance. Balance. Yeah. Balance between, you know, the hype and the reality, mm. between ambition and caution, between pushing the boundaries of what's possible and making sure those possibilities actually align with our values. It's about embracing the unknown, but not with this, you know, blind faith or reckless abandon, mm. but with curiosity, some skepticism, and this deep-seated belief in our ability to shape a better future. Well said. And sometimes that process of shaping the future, it starts with a stack of articles, a healthy dose of curiosity, and a deep dive into the unknown. So to our listener, who's clearly on that journey, keep asking those big questions, keep exploring those uncharted territories, and never lose that sense of wonder. We're excited to see where your quantum explorations take you next.